team physician at the University of Tennessee and uh, and also now at Oklahoma State for many, many years and native of Oklahoma, Pond Creek. Uh, Dr. Val Jean Ivan joins us and actually his brother, ba uh, Van Shea Ivan, set up our other guest this morning. Coming up in the next hour, David Jackson. We're going to talk high school sports with the uh, head of the OSSAA. But uh, we're going to talk uh, COVID-19 and how it's impacting college athletic programs, at least through the uh, eyes of the medical profession, uh, with Dr. Ivan. Good morning, Doc. Hey, Robert. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. And, and uh, found out yesterday, I didn't realize, uh, you know, Dr. Ivan's uh, daughter, Austin, who does a lot of television work and did some work for us with Go Pokes and uh, was uh, is a graduate of the school of strategic media and all of that kind of stuff at oklahoma state she didn't have the coronavirus but she picked a bad time to uh, have a, a have time. an arm injury yeah so we had a crazy crazy few days there and uh well starting march around march 11th yeah well when you when you look at this situation and i know you and i have talked you, you kind of you kind of had a heads up, and it sounds like the the warning bell had been sounded for Oklahoma State for the athletic department, and that in, in some ways, you know, there were probably too many athletes still on campus after spring break, but uh, there were some coaches that were able to get their athletes, you know, get the message across, and they, they were at home. Uh, kind of give us a feel for how this impacted Oklahoma State and how well – how well they responded to it? Well, you, we were uh, we were in Kansas City on March the 11th. We'd actually played uh, our guys, at least, had played yeah. on Wednesday and uh, finished the game. And, and we got back to the hotel. And you know, during the game, I I couldn't I didn't know what was going on around the country. Uh, had had some ability to text some people and could tell that there was some things happening but not you know you can't tell when you're engaged in a in a game and you're sitting there watching your own team but got back to the hotel turned on ESPN and you could tell or I could tell then the gravity of what was what was transpiring um, that was happening right here in Oklahoma City you know with Rudy Gobert and uh, you could tell that the direction that this was moving was not going to be or I thought was not going to be good for what we were trying to get done up in Kansas City uh, with the Big 12 tournament. So things moved pretty quickly. You know, there was nothing that happened that evening, but the next uh, morning, uh, obviously that tournament was canceled, and and we started heading back and, and kind of started the I, – in my mind started the process pretty quickly uh, when – you know, you, you've seen how fluid this is and how fast things happen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you could, we as we started to work through it, and we got into that weekend. Uh, we already were were having the conversations in terms of how we wanted to mobilize and how we wanted to approach it as a as an athletic department, and certainly keep an eye on what President Hargis was was saying and and instructing and guiding, and you know. One of the first things was just kind of canceling class, if you remember. It seems like it's been forever ago. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the first things was just canceling classes on campus and then going to online and such. And so, you know, it's it's been one of those things that you could have never predicted, but uh, every day it seems like you're we're, we're moving in a slightly different direction or gaining information here or there that gives us some guidance. Um, but man, it, it's happened fast. And to think that this has all been in just roughly six weeks is just, you know, I can't even, it's hard to get your arms around this much could happen in six weeks. Um, but the good news is it has all happened in six weeks. So if you're trying to project further, um, I think that helps us stay optimistic in regards to you know, as we're looking at it from an athletic department perspective, that there's a lot of time now between April the 24th and, for instance, August the 24th. 
you know, I, I know you've been active in your field. Uh, you've enjoyed being a team doctor. You were at the University of Tennessee and, and uh, you know, at a great time to be at Tennessee with, uh, you know, with Peyton Manning and, and the things that were going on, uh, especially in their football program, but also other sports as well. And then came, came back or you know, came to Oklahoma State, which I, I know you were excited about doing. Um, in all your time, and, and I know you go to conventions, I know you're, 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 you communicate with your other uh, contemporaries in, in this field, could anybody have, have even, I mean, even if they were just sitting at a convention saying, well, let's see, what are the worst things that could have happened? Could anybody have even made this thing up? No. Answer is no. Um, we, we, you know, we have, a, uh, and you're, you're right, you know, there's multiple uh, sports organizations, and, and we network, you know, we, wow, as old as I'm getting, I've done this long enough that, we know people in every conference, coast to coast, and you know you obviously know your in-conference team physician comrades the best. And I've been fortunate because of that to have great contacts in the SDC and in the Big Twelve now. Uh, but then you also are meeting people that are at the next level. So we've also got good friends that are in Major League Baseball and the NBA and, and uh, NFL, and uh, and that is really that's the great thing about sports medicine is that you're able to network, you're able to visit, you're able to pick up the phone, call somebody that uh, is at a, uh, another institution or at a, the next level and, and get thoughts, bounce things off of them. So, you know, there is a section of any type of medicine called infectious disease. And in infectious disease, it pertains to us. I mean, you know, there are contact sports, uh, for instance, wrestlers that have uh, infectious disease on their skin that have to be cleared before they can uh, before they can wrestle. Uh, there's clearly a concern yearly with the annual flu season and outbreaks, and we manage that with how we uh, offer flu shots and do our flu clinics in the fall for all of our sports. Um, how we would isolate somebody uh, among a team if they were, if they are sick with the flu or really even any uh, febrile illness. So all of those things we talk about in certain sections of our sports medicine meetings and organizations. But to think that you would have something of this magnitude was would be really really difficult for anybody to to anticipate and that's why it's the pandemic in regards to you don't see these but every however many years and we're living this is history you know we're we're in the middle of it and 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 that's that's an interesting thing for me because we will be able to help uh, guide us all through you know the the sports medicine profession will be a big part of how we move through this and how we're able to recover and and get back to enjoying um, athletics and sports, which is such a big part of our society. Yeah, we've had a lot of, in fact, most of the coaches at Oklahoma State have been on with us, Coach Gajewski, and, and uh, you know, just the other day, Colin Carmichael, and uh, football coaches, and, and just, you know, runs the gamut. And I guess you have, uh, for the most part during this, you've had two briefing days a week with uh, the staff through like zoom calls type situations and i've had feedback from the coaches saying yeah we feel really good about the information and and the the resource we have uh, in, in doc ivan what has been your goal in in during this uh in communicating to the coaches what have you tried to get to them most to kind of help help them and help their teams and and the program get through this well, that's a good question, uh, and that has evolved. When we first started, we were just talking simply about what we wanted to do with our student-athletes and where was the best place for them to be. Certainly at that point in time on March the 13th, we couldn't accurately project anything well, but you had to have a gut feeling and you had to make a call. And so at that time, my first thought was is, is, is we felt as though our student-athletes would be best with their families for the most support that they could have in, in that setting, you know. And some couldn't get home, 
and we didn't anticipate them being able to go long distances. Obviously, our international students, there was not even a, a, a conversation in that regard. But we started that part of it out way back when, and um, uh, gosh, it would have been that weekend, like March the 13th. And, and I remember conversations early on with the coaches, and especially Coach Gundy, and when he, when he mobilized and, 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 you know, really we had good frank conversations, said, hey, we think it's best that our kids get with their families because this could last a while, and they're going to have the most support if they're home. And when he made that directive, that was that was one of the first things that we all uh, were felt really good about. And then I was talking daily with Chad and Coach Holder and different ones in the athletic department, and I said, you know, we're we're having these conversations, and I can't remember who I'm saying what to. <laughs> so we actually uh, started. The, the teleconferencing in the first few days was just on the phone, and we had about five or six of us. And then we moved to a bigger uh, group, and we did the Zoom calls uh, that anybody could hop on in the athletic department. I don't see exactly who's on those. I'm not looking that close, but, I mean, I, there's a good number. So the, the conversation has changed from initially – how we're mobilizing student-athletes, where they're at, if they're here, how we're helping them and, and helping them get through this. But if it, as it has evolved over the six weeks, now we're into, you know, what we need to be doing education-wise, staying in, in, in communication with them as it pertains to what they need to know. Certainly our academic people uh, are involved individually, you know, uh, with, with Marilyn, her staff, Coach Glass has been involved in, in what he's able to do with his guidelines in place. Uh, our training staff is involved in regards to being in touch with them and, 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 and being on top of anything that may come up. We put a, we put a document together uh, for everyone to know in the athletic department how we would manage someone if they were here or even if they were not in Stillwater and how I would be involved and communicate with them. Um, because we don't, you know, we didn't know what to expect, but we didn't want everybody to think they had to go to some ER somewhere and to get tested. So it was a lot of education early, um, but allowing us to be a part of that so we could walk them through that individually and be protective as well as opportunistic in getting that education to them. So that those conference calls that you're referring to, we've been doing those on Mondays and Thursdays, and and I try to hit on a lot of different aspects of of what is coming out from an informational perspective, and it's it's challenging because there's a wider range of people on there. So what I might be saying to a coach uh, would could be different than what someone else in another department might be ex especially interested in hearing. So it's it's fairly broad, but um, I'm trying to be relevant. I'm trying to be up to date, trying to be informative in regards to uh, helping people understand where we're at from a standpoint of my field uh, in terms of medicine and in terms of testing and in terms of the numbers uh, that we're seeing both locally in the county and the state, and then really being mindful of the fact that there's there's a lot that's happening every day, and so we have to digest and continue to add to the knowledge base that we have and then have some ability to project short-term and long-term. Uh, so that's kind of been the way I've approached it. And, and when I say short-term, I'm talking today, you know, today and tomorrow, what happens if something, if we get information from any student athlete in particular, how do we manage, but also longer-term as I project each month, June, July, and even into August, in terms of the potential for student athletes to come back at any point. Well, and that last sentence is where I'm going next. And, and I, I warned you yesterday, and I realize doctors are the worst people to ask this question to because they're the ones that are, are most analytical about this. And that means, especially for a novel, uh, virus like this is, 
uh, that means generally the answer is going to be we don't know. We have so much more to learn. But the question everybody wants to know is what what are the chances? What are the chances, I guess, the next two sports? We know there's not going to be any baseball, no college World Series, softball's done, all the spring sports are done. The next things on the agenda are soccer. Uh, we had Colin on this week. And then obviously football, which is uh, – you know, the financial engine, certainly for college athletics, and it's also the most popular thing going. And uh, yeah, everybody wants to know, what, what what are the chances? I mean, can you – well, is there anything you question. can say I on wish that? I, yeah, you know, Robert, it's, it's great. It's the million-dollar question. I wish I had a yes. crystal ball. Multi-million dollar um, question. Yeah, you're, exact, you're exactly right. That's, that's, a great, that's a great way to say it. Um, you, we knew April was going to be bad. And, and that was anticipated, and that has been the case. And I know I've always said in our in our conference calls that we have to get through April, to, and we will have a di- we will be having a different conversation in May, and we will be because now we're reopening, um, you know, the country, if you will, community by community across the across the country. And so May uh, will be different, and then I'm convinced that so will June and July and there'll be momentum that we'll gain. Now, having said that, we have to have, you know, and you've, you've kept up um, in terms of the, the media, we have to have our overall numbers have to continue to show improvement and go down. Um, and that's, that's, that's a challenge because this is the coast to coast pandemic, but overall that needs to happen. And we have to continue to be aware as you hear the term surveillance, that there are no obvious hot spots that are resurfacing as we mobilize and get people back out into the community and the workplace. And so those are imperative. But if we can make that happen and emerge our science as it pertains to the ability to have testing widespread, uh, as well as the emergence of our antibody testing, and not only the emergence of it, there's a difference, Robert. The, the rapid test uh, that you hear about for coronavirus simply tells you if you do or don't have the illness. That's different from the antibody screen, which tells you if you have been exposed and have maybe developed some immunity, okay? And that's a bit more interpretive, and that's going to evolve but the early data seems to suggest that there has been more of coronavirus exposure in society than what we had originally thought. So that's a good thing. Um, but as all of those come together and we move forward, that is, I think, you know, obviously we'd love to have a vaccine, uh, but that doesn't happen as soon as the other things that we're talking about. But as those come together, I think that's our recipe. Now, as an, as an athletic department goes, we have to have a, uh, this is not be just, uh, it'll start with a medical directive, obviously, and that's what we talked about. All the, all the, all the organizations will, will be, uh, giving guidance and their perspective to the NCAA. Uh, Dr. Hainline, the medical director of the NCAA, then will issue a statement, and, and that will that will be where we will start by and large. But each institution will have to have a great strategy that will not just be from a medical perspective. So in, in the way we see it, this will be very integrative of not just your sports medicine athletic training staff, but your strength and conditioning staff and your coaching staff. So as it pertains to the the working and the mechanics of the sport or any sport, those three will have to uh, have to all just be seamless in regards to how they're approaching this and how they are going to um, construct their uh, plans, knowing that there will be some guidance, obviously, from the NCAA, 
and some from the Big 12. But then, not unlike the things that we do individually, each institution will have a little bit of their own twist to how they're going to manage things. So it, it's going to be a team effort. There's no question about it. Um, but I feel confident that, uh, that we'll be able to put together a, a great plan, and, and it'll be well thought out. And, uh, and we, will, we will be absolutely doing our best. And, and there will be some tweaks along the way. You know, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, something that we have to anticipate, uh, given the fluid nature and, and things that may happen. Um, but once again, we're six weeks into it, and, uh, you know, we've got a lot to look forward to, I think, in front of us. Yeah, I know this, because um, this is the same at hospitals right now, but it'll be the same in the athletic department when, when it gets up and running your environmental and custodial staff are going to be some of the most important people you've got because they're the ones that are going to be charged to repeatedly, repeatedly, I should say, keep everything sterile and clean. And that, that's going to be – there'll be a huge – you know, I'm not saying anything you don't know. There'll be a huge emphasis on that. Well, there will be. You know, I've talked with Chief, and, and uh, Kyle Waters has been involved in our conference calls, and we were working on a document last night, that kind of an initial – document and how uh, kind of a protocol and what it would look like uh, we've got some young people that we need to get back sooner than others for some post-op rehabs um and for good outcomes and so we we're working through that and, and there's no question that that was part of that document is the is the ability and the necessity uh to come in and and clean disinfect equipment uh, both before and after um, that, that, that they're in use, whether it's in the training room or the strength conditioning room at this point. And like I said, then a lot of things happen thereafter when you get bigger groups. But even with the smaller, it'll be a little bit of a dress rehearsal as we know it now um, for us to be able to work through that. But, but that's a huge part of, the, uh, of our strategy, no doubt. Dr. Val Jean Ivan, good luck, and I appreciate your time. And uh, I know that uh, you and the, the training staff, uh, you know, on the front lines for the athletic department have done a, a great job in, in helping these kids so far. But uh, hopefully the call will come where you help these kids get back and, and get the, uh, you know, the athletic department back to normal or more normal. So uh, I appreciate your time. Yes. Yeah. Well, the kids are anxious. You can tell, you know, the, the Zoom calls you're on. Uh, I think they are, they're showing great maturity. I think, you know, they're interested in knowing what's next, uh, but they're also anxious. They want to – this is what they want to be doing, and, uh, and it's our challenge to make sure that we can do that and we can do it as safely as possible. And, uh, and I think that uh, – I think we'll be able to – when. Is, is the other things unfold, you know, is the things we talked about. Once the things come into place, um, uh, I, I still am going to stay real optimistic, and I think it's a great challenge, and, and, and that's what we're doing in athletics is we like challenges. Thanks. Thanks, Doc, and uh, we will uh, hopefully uh, get back together sometime soon. Thanks, Robert. Good talking to you. All right. All right, Dr. Bye -bye. Val Jean Ivan, team physician uh, for Oklahoma State Athletics.